Chapter 8, Lesson 6. Divide by a counting number. To divide any fraction problem, you just need to follow the following five steps. Remember, these steps will work for any fraction division problem. Be sure you learn them, study them, and work on them very hard because they will make fractions and division so much easier. These steps will work for any division fraction problem. Step number one, check for mixed numbers. If the problem has a mixed number, you need to turn it into an improper fraction. When I'm looking at my problem, I see that two and four-fifths is a mixed number. In some division problems, there may not be a mixed number, or you might even have the first fraction is a mixed number and the second fraction is a mixed number. No matter what, if you see a mixed number, you need to turn it into an improper fraction. Remember to do this, I taught you the circle trick. Starting with the whole number, you're going to move around in a circle. The whole number times the bottom number, continue around your circle, plus the top number. So 2 times 5 is 10, plus 4 is 14. And you always keep the denominator the same as it used to be. So originally it was a 5 in the denominator, so my new fraction will also have a 5 in the denominator. Step number one is to change any mixed numbers into fractions. Step number two, check for whole numbers. If the problem has one, turn the whole number into a fraction. You can do this by putting the whole number over one. Here I showed what I already did with my mixed number, but step number two says to look for whole numbers. I see the whole number three. It says in order to turn 3 into a fraction, I simply put it over 1. The reason why this works is if we use our uh, simplifying rules, I would see how many times 1 goes inside of 3, and I would realize it goes in 3 times. So 3 over 1 is the same as 3. So now we've changed our mixed number into a fraction, and we've changed our whole number into a fraction. The next rule is to use the flip-flop rule. Remember, the flip-flop rule is only used on the second fraction. To help you remember, I'm actually going to put a flip-flop over my second fraction. This tells me that I need to use the flip-flop rule on my second fraction. What I mean by the flip-flop rule is, instead of 3 over 1, I'm actually going to flip-flop these and put 1 over 3. So all I did is I flip-flopped these two numbers. Instead of 3 over 1, I now have 1 over 3. Step number 4. Turn the division sign into a multiplication sign. So we've changed the mixed number into a fraction, we've changed the whole number into the fraction, we've flip-flopped the second fraction, and now I need to take this division sign and instead of dividing, we're going to multiply instead. Step number five says bring down or rewrite the first fraction. The way I just showed you now, there's no need to bring it down, but what I mean by this is if I had started from the beginning, two and four-fifths, divided by the whole number 3, and I fix 2 and 4 fifths into 14 fifths, and I change the whole 3 into 3 over 1, and then I change the division sign into a multiplication sign. Sometimes if you're working in this downward pattern, starting up and moving things down, you just need to rewrite this first fraction. So I just said bring down the 14 fifths. I like to move in a downward manner because this way I'm sure I'm not mixing up my numbers or also I'm not erasing something completely 
because then if I do make a mistake, I won't remember what it was in the beginning. So if you are working your problem moving down, that's what step number five is. It simply says, just make sure you bring this first fraction down. When you're done, you're going to end up with this multiplication problem. And this is what we got. We changed our mixed number into 14 fifths. We changed our whole number into 3 over 1, but then flip-flopped and changed it to multiplication. So after all these steps, what you end up with is a multiplication problem, which we have become very good at and we are pretty familiar with.